Daniel chapter 3, verse 1. Now, I realize this is going to be boring to some of you, but you know, there never was a nation in the world uh, like America that had any more music than what we have today, and you're exposed to it all the time. A man said one time, he said, music is the universal language. Now, what he meant by that was this. Anybody can understand music even if they can't understand a speech. When you hear Glenn Miller's band playing In the Mood, you know, that, you know that's not a call to a prayer meeting. And you don't have to be an American to know that. But an Asiatic or a Russian can get that. And uh, music speaks. It has a universal language. If you want to have good relationships with other countries, you send jazz bands to them. Don't send them politicians. When Nixon went down to South America, the two rotten eggs on him. When Eisenhower said he was going to Tokyo, they said, you get out and stay out. And he said, yes, sir. But if you want to get along, send Benny Goodman to Russia, and he'll beat his way clear through it. Because music is a universal language, and folks understand it. So it behooves every one of God's children to know something about music. There are three kinds of music for the Christian there in the book of Colossians, and you ought to know something about it. All right. Now, Daniel chapter 3, verse 1. Nebuchadnezzar the king made an image of gold, whose height was three score cubits, sixty, the breadth thereof six cubits, then it's a cylinder, sixty by six by six, and he set it up in the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king sent to gather together the princes and governors, the captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces to come to the dedication of the image which Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. It says six times he set it up. Then the princes, the governors, nobody's immune to music. The princes, the governors, captains, judges, treasurers, counselors, sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces were gathered together at the dedication of the image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. And they stood up before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Nobody's immune from it. Uh, one of our recent president's daughter danced the Watusi in the Smithsonian Institute with all the images right there. Uh, and at what time you hear the sound of the Cornet, verse 5, and flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, dulcimer, and all kinds of music, you fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. And whoso falleth not down and worship shall the same hour be cast into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. Therefore at that time, when all the people heard the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, psaltery, and all kinds of music, and who can get away from it these days? Who can escape it? You can't go shopping down at Woolworths or Presby's or Grants without hearing it, or Murphy's. You go to a drugstore today and that stuff is just going in one ear and out the other. You can't pass to the average department store today without somebody just beating the thing right through you. And at what time you hear the sound of the music, all the people, the nations, the languages fell down and worshipped the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. Father, help us to be clear in what we say. Help us to be clear in our thinking. Bless this broadcast. May we say what's necessary. May the Holy Spirit honor his word, protect the truth. May it find a lodging place in hearts and lives. Bless your people that assemble today in congregations all over this earth uh, that are still have an ear tuned to the truth and don't resent it, but appreciate it and love it. And prosper your word and correct us where we need correction. For Jesus' sake, amen. Amen. Now, Nebuchadnezzar is a type of the Antichrist, and you folks that know your Bible know that. Now, you know that. And knowing that, you must realize that in the last days, when the devil gets all the world together under the United Nations and the Roman Pontiff, the great integrating force is going to be music. That's what's going to be used. The thing that's going to get them together is music. Now, I'm talking this morning to Germans and uh, Frenchmen and Italians, Spaniards, uh, uh, Swedes, Norwegians, Englishmen, Scotsmen, Irishmen. Uh, Indians, uh, Senegalese, uh, Liberians, Libyans, Egyptians, Arabians. I'm talking to all kinds of folks. And there's only one way you can get all those folks together, and that's on music. The question is, who's music? Who's music? Uh, most of you German folks I'm talking to now know nothing about German music. You forsook your heritage. You don't know how, where you came from, what your people get left with. Most of you English folks I'm talking to right now, the only English music you know is the Beatles. And that isn't English. And most of you Scotch folk I'm talking to right now, you don't know what Scotch music is. You wouldn't heard it. You wouldn't recognize it if you heard it, unless it's played in a bagpipe. A bagpiper has to keep walking because he makes a poor target. <laughs> and if you were a Frenchman, I doubt if any of you know French music if you heard it. And if you were an Italian, some of you wouldn't recognize Italian music. Today, the world is getting together on African music. 
and it behooves a Christian to understand something about music. Now, I'm known a musician, and uh, my voice when I sing sounds like a Chinese bagpipe, but I, 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 I appreciate music, and I know good music when I hear it, and I'm not going to undertake to instruct you this morning in music, but I just want to just drop some things your way, and you pray about them. Number one, music was originally given to worship God. In Ezekiel chapter 28, the devil was the choir director of the heavenly choir that worshiped God, and he had pipes and tabrets, wind instruments, brass instruments, that accompanied the praise of God before Genesis 1-1. Why, in the book of Job, we read, with the morning stars sang together, and all the sons of God shouted for joy before Genesis 1-1. Every bad thing in this world is a good thing twisted, and music is one of the greatest things in this world. I guess... Uh, and the humanly speaking, uh, next to uh, things like unselfishness and love, it's probably the greatest. Music's a great thing. Music can pick you up. Music can drop you. Uh, the, the Lord can take a tune like softly and tenderly, Jesus calling, just as I am, and drag you all away from hell to heaven in less than a minute. Just listen to it. And you know something? If the Lord can do something with music, the devil can do something with music. And the devil can turn on that jukebox and flip on that switch and drag you down in the muck and mire of sin and drag you down to the sewer and dump you in the slough of despond and leave you stuck in the mud uh, a hubcap hide or a Ferris wheel. The devil can use music. The devil can use, uh, use music. All right, now, in the, in, in the beginning, it was to worship God with. It was for God's glory. And then God took, then the man took that music and debased it. In Genesis, we read where Jubal was the father of all those that handled the harp and the organ. Uh, the organ was originally an instrument for worshiping God with, and yet that instrument I'm pointing right over to there right now is now using dance bands, electronic organ. It's one of the greatest dance band instruments there is. They've got them now where it can imitate the brass section and the reed section, the string section on the organ. Well, it takes a genius to play one now. Didn't back in the old days. But he said he was an organist and he got out of work. man said, how? He said, my monkey died. <laughs> he said, those little things you just grind, you know, and turn it. And uh, that organ was used for worshiping God, and then man used it for himself. In the book of Job, I read where the children of the wealthy atheists uh, uh, rejoice at the sound of the harp and the organ, and their children dance. Ever read that in the book of Job? And those folks were the folks before the flood, Job chapter 22, that turned against God and says, what is the Almighty that we should serve him? All right, music was taken from heaven and dragged down to this earth and used to glorify man with. Uh, when the classical music began, it was all Protestant music. You couldn't have caught any classical music in the South Island with a flashlight and an earphone. And when that music first began, it began under men like Bach and Handel. Those men were German Protestant composers. Handel's Messiah is just filled with quotations from a King James 1611 Bible from one end to the other. And you read the oratorios by Bach in the German text, and you'll find Jesus, lover of my soul, my Jesus, I love thee, my dearest Jesus, my blessed Redeemer, thou hast died for me, thou hast gone to death for me, thou hast lifted me up from death. That first bunch of classical composers, they worship God with the music, brother. They restored it to its heavenly function. You have the classical composers, Mozart, Handel, Bach, and then a little bit later this becomes romantic music under Beethoven and Schumann and Brahms. Now, there isn't anybody in this building that should know something about that and appreciate it. You say, well, Roman, I ain't educated. I ain't had no education. You don't have to have no education. I had a fellow over my house one time and never finished the sixth grade. And I put on a piece of music for him, and I, and I said, tell me what that reminds you of. And he listened to that thing, and he said, well, that music kind of sad and lonely. Sound like maybe a hunter out in the woods someplace. I was playing in the overture to the Freischutz by Von Weber. That's what that overture is about. It's about a hunter in the woods. You don't need no education to understand music. Any, excuse me, any education to understand music. Music is a universal language. You can read it. Uh, some of you men I'm talking to right now, uh, you missed half your life and not getting good music and enjoying it. Some of you country fellows, you really couldn't enjoy it if you just listened to it. You've got to expose yourself. God knows you exposed everything else. <laughs> you might as well expose yourself to some good music. I know it's hard for you. You know what the average man in America thinks about classical music? I feel like I thought I had to go to that concert, and his, uh, he asked, what are they playing? And his wife said, they're playing Beethoven's Fifth Symphony. And he said, well, thank goodness I missed four of them. <laughs> That's about how they feel about it, you know. And one man said to the other man, he said, uh, I'm educated now, and for your information, Beethoven's Fifth is not something you drink. 
And the average man in America, you know, that's how he looks at it. I always did appreciate that ad that said uh, our, our quartet played uh, uh, Beethoven's uh, Sonata in E flat. A quartet played it. Uh, a quartet played Beethoven. Beethoven lost. <laughs> I've always appreciated that. Maybe some of you would. And you know, if a man would just sit around there and listen to that stuff and let it get a hold of him, it'll do something for him. Did you know there's more inspiration and more spirituality in a good symphony by Brahms than there is in the average all-night gospel sing in America? You know what John Philip Sousa says? John Philip Sousa said jazz will last as long as people listen to music through their feet instead of their brains. A lot of truth in that, brother. If music is the language of the soul, jazz is cussing. <laughs> and I'll tell you, it's a rough day when seven couples get up to dance when a waitress drops a plate of dishes on the floor, boy. Think somebody turned on the jukebox. <laughs> you, fellas should, you fellas should know something about your heritage. Listen, if you're, if you, if I'm not talking about racial discrimination, I'm talking about good common sense. You folks are Europeans mostly, you ought to know something about European music. If you're Indian, you ought to know something about Indian music. I wonder why it is all the Europeans in America, all that is, got African music. That's all they got. African music. That's a strange thing, isn't it? We well, your ancestors raised on them. I bet Sir Walter Raleigh wouldn't get very far in that. <laughs> You see Winston Churchill and Christopher Columbus, you know, and Napoleon. <laughs> Don't know where you came from, brother. And I'm not, I'm not knocking anybody music. I'm saying to each his own, brother. To each his own. And uh, that music in, in classical music degenerated. First it became the worship of God, the music of Mozart and and Beethoven those, and, and Handel and Bach and those people. Then I believe Big von Beethoven and began to kind of sing. You know, when you listen to Beethoven, you hear Beethoven, you don't hear the Holy Spirit. You can listen to Beethoven 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, the odd ones are the best ones. You know what you'll hear? You'll hear the man. You'll hear the man. You won't hear the Lord. you hear the man. You know why you're hearing the man? Because music was the base to where instead of expressing holy things and spiritual things and biblical things, it became self-expression. And when you express yourself, you express the man. Why, you listen to Ludwig von Beethoven, you can see a Prussian just stand there with a steel helmet on and his boots together, that hand straight out in the air. Did you ever hear that thing and that, not that movement, not that da 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 da, not that cliche, but did you ever hear the rest of that symphony that goes dum dum ta tum, dum tum 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 tum, dum ta tum, dum ta tum, ba 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 Did you ever hear that thing? Boy, all you need with that is a swastika, man. That thing goes. Why, you hear old Beethoven, many of that goes to Schubert and Brahms and Schumann and Wagner, and the first thing you know, the man is expressing himself instead of expressing the Lord. Brahma never had it right. It always goes downhill. Now, the difference between most classical music and music you listen to is a fellow said, well, uh, classical music is music you listen to and you always hope it'll turn into a tune. <laughs> and a lot of folks feel that way about it. But classical music just has different rhythms to it. And simple folks can only catch one rhythm. I'll try to show you what I mean here. Uh, this isn't a symphony orchestra. <laughs> I, I'm, I'll play you something from Beethoven's Ninth. Uh, it goes this way. Now, you can understand that, see? And you can understand that's, that's March music. Europeans from Japha, I mean, they're going to go. They're going to go. Why, you go over to Japan, listen to that uh, Kodo music and that Shamisan music, and hear those fellows sing that Nani Wabushi, they won't sing European music. They won't enjoy it. You know what a Japanese told me in, after World War II? He said, all of your music, March music. And I said, no, it didn't march music. Schumann, Beethoven, Brahms. We went down the studio and took out a typical uh, a symphony by Beethoven and played it. He had me right. He had me. He, he's right. I'm wrong. It was all march. Steady rhythm. Steady rhythm. Right on through. Right on through. And I, I, I 
said, well, how can you get rid of that rhythm? And he took me over to another studio, and here's an old boy sitting there with that three-string kodo, you know. And it goes, it, it has notes between the black notes, so help me. And it goes, <laughs> and that guy sat there, and he sang. He sang. I thought, man, boy, he must have got tuned in the shortwave band or something. I couldn't figure out what in the world he was doing. But you know, to him, he's making good sense because he, he got the rhythm out of it. Now, most classical music has variation rhythm. That's why folks don't like to listen to it. They like just something put them in a hypnotic state, you know. But most of it breaks up. I'll play you some of UNESCO Romanian Rhapsody number two to show you how they, the variation they go. That breaks. The rhythm breaks. Not all modern music that folks listen to, there's just a steady beat right on through. And that brings me to the point of the message. At the time that uh, the modern period came into being with Wagner and Tchaikovsky and that bunch and Mussorgsky and Rachmaninoff, then man debased his music not only from worshiping God to man's emotions and feelings, that was the base to an animal level. You can't listen to Debussy's Afternoon of the Fawn and have your thoughts stay clean too long. It doesn't come in that way. You can't listen to the, to the uh, Salome where she danced for Richard Strauss and think about Bible study. It just doesn't come through like that. And so the first thing you know, along about uh, 1910, 1893, down in New Orleans, I know European town. Down in New Orleans, 1893, 1910, you have a bunch of fellas come along called Buddy Bolden. Papa Lane, King Oliver, taught Louis Armstrong most what he knows. Nick LaRocca, 1913. And these fellows began a kind of music that began like this. It was down on the other side of Canal Street, Bourbon and Royal. The fellow played the piano, and he'd go, boom, boom, ba 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 boom, 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 ba boom, 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 and pick it up for the customers. And they called that back in those days jazz. I heard a man say one time, he's an Episcopalian minister, said he was an expert on jazz music. I thought to myself, if that fella, if his audience knew what the term meant, he wouldn't even say it. A lot of ignorant people run around these days. And go on playing that thing, and they began to orchestrate it. Old saxophone moving inside the piano, trumpet moving inside the piano, pretty sort of trombone moving inside the piano, and they'd play Back in those days, when they'd bury a man, they'd bury him down the seminary, down to the side of Canal Street. I've seen this fine old European seminary. And they'd take him down there and march down the street with him and bury him, play the dead man's march going down. Boom, 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 Chopin. Boom, boom, boom. And then coming back there, the fellow would say, uh, jazz it up, boys. And they'd play South Rampart Street Parade or when the saints go marching in. And they'd come down that, come back from the graveyard and swing up the music. Uh, they a headache. Folks down in Orleans didn't care for them all when they got started. Lowest class of people, worst class of music. The music that's now promoted by high school teachers and college professors in the United States for young people. It's classic. It's already You can put art in anything and make it right. Uh, one back in those days, a fellow went down there on Bourbon Street and said, I want five dollars. And the man said, what for? He said, we've got to bury a saxophone player. Didn't have enough money to bury him. The fellow said, take 20 and bury four of them. And that's how they felt about it, boy. That's how they felt about it. And they came back from there, and that music came back. They'd pick it up, and they'd go, dum, 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 Off they go, boy. And that beat got working this way. And instead of going, bum, 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 they picked up that, and they put it in every beat, and they played. Now this is called a downbeat, and this is an upbeat, and the one in between is an afterbeat. 
And the one between the beats is an off beat. Hence you get... And when a drummer plays in a dance band, he puts his right foot down and plays every beat here, then every other beat here, and then three here, and then the down beat here, and the after beat here. That's why I can draw and preach at the same time. <laughs> going like that. And I thought I guess I'm really get really get going good so you can get this one going here every beat, this one here every beat, and this one here the, the after beats, and this one here. That one, that way. It gets a little complicated as you go. And so when they played, they had a big old symbol sitting on this side of the drummer, called a sock symbol, and it's a symbol that opens and closes. And when the drummer puts his foot down, the symbol's closed. One's inverted, one's up. When he lifts his foot up, they come open. So you hit them open, they ring, they go. When they close, they go. And when the drummer plays, he plays. Two closed, one open. That's behind every piece of music that ever came out in America between 1920 and 1970, including the rock and roll, including the bop, and including the all-night gospel sayings. They got that thing up alongside Kansas City, and old Earl Father Hines got a hold of it in Kansas City, and he played it this way, and instead of playing... He'd play this way. Dum, dum, da, dum, dum, da, dum, dum, da, dum. That's eight to the bar. Instead of dum, dum, da, dum, and instead of dum, dum, da, dum, it's dum, dum, da, dum, dum, da, dum, da, dum, da, dum, da, dum. Everybody talks about heavy me going and a boom, 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 boom. Yeah, man, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you talk to these old folks out in the country by and say, I like that good old country gospel music. You out of your mind? <laughs> that isn't country gospel music. Who ever heard of old folks out in the country? Your grandmothers and grandfathers that loved the Lord and loved the Word of God and read the Bible and went to those old meetings on a fifth Sunday. You think they went around singing that stuff? Everybody talk about hitting me, going when that gospel choo choo train coming here, man. What kind of stuff? Why well, you can, why well, you can, you can, uh, you can uh, pick up some of those old records of those evangelistic campaigns made back in the days of Billy Sunday and Dwight L. Moody. And you hear that congregation saying. Why, you, they didn't sing those kind of speeds. Why, the wheat think they were dragons. They'd sing, There's a land that is fairer than day. That's the country. The country is, uh, that, well, that stuff you hear, that isn't country Christian music. Country gospel music, you know. The old gospel man. Our <laughs> <laughs> church come on radio one morning, they said, this is the hour of deliverance to deliver people. <laughs> you better deliver them from the music first, man. I was up one time in Gastonia, North Carolina, and at a country church up there, and they had a, a man and a woman get up and sing a duet. Funniest thing you ever saw in your life. He's about five feet uh, four and weighed about uh, 120 pounds, and she's about five feet six and weighed about 200 pounds. <laughs> And they got up there, and they had, a, they had a, a bass fiddle, guitar, drums, and piano. That's a rhythm section of dance orchestra, folks. That is the 20th century musical idiom of conveying the uh, reciprocal communication, blah, blah, blah. That's just all hell broke loose. And they got up there and kicked that thing off. I never heard Krupa kick one, one off anybody. I never have. I've heard Cole Krupa play Wirebrush Stomp Boy till there was just a piece of wire all over that drum stand and that shirt was just soaked in too. Changed his shirt four times a night. Split his spine all over the drum from those rim shots and playing... <laughs> While they hit off that gospel train, he says, Now, Mr. Miss So-and-so going to sing for us the gospel train. <laughs> that guy crawled over that bass fiddle like rain coming down on a tin roof. And they got up there and saying, I'm on that hallelujah thing. I'm going to glory. Yes, da 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 But out there saying, I should enjoy that old country music. Oh, what in the world are you talking about, man? Well, that's just, uh, didn't you ever hear Bobby Haggard and Ray, and, uh, Ray Baduke play Big Noise Monetka? That's all that stuff is. 
Hell, just vomit up another tune, brother. <laughs> that ain't no, that ain't no gospel. But I have one of these all, but I have one of these all right gospel uh, sings over here in Atlanta. And a friend of mine went, and he said, "Well, they got up there, and he said, got there to pay some piece and some uh, big hefty sister got up there and began to kind of sway with the music, and a bunch of old boys down the front row began to say, Amen, Amen, Amen.'" Amen. She hadn't begun to sing yet. Amen means so be it. Verily, that's true. Well, how do you say that when nothing's been said? Nothing's been communicated, if you call that communication. So that thing has fallen to pieces. Now, folks, the difference between good music and bad music for the Christian is simple. Uh, good Christian music is waltz time or march time. The jazz music that Benny Goodman played in the 30s and that Stan Kenton played in the 40s, and that the uh, Presley played in the 50s, and the Beatles played in the 60s, that stuff is all one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Da-da-da, da-da-da, da-da-da. Now listen to that a minute. Four to three. One, two, 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 three. That's a horse. That isn't a prayer meeting coming up. <laughs> you start this stuff. Folks say, well, I guess that I like it. Yeah, yeah, you get the judgment seat of Christ and see how the Holy Spirit in you felt about it. All right, there's that foot tapping stuff. That isn't the Lord. That isn't the Holy Spirit. All right, this thing went on and on, and when you hear that, that's it. You know, some of God's people are so stupid. They're, they're like sheep. They're so dumb. They say, well, I like to listen to Lawrence Welk and Guy Lombardo because they're sweet. And they don't have that old nasty music. They don't. You know, some of God's people think just because it's slow, it's decent. Well, I used to play in dance bands. We played the slow ones for the girls and the fast ones for the boys. And listen, you can take the why some of the dirtiest music in this world is a temple just about like this. I cover the waterfront, body and soul, rose room. I was playing da dum da dum da dum da 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 dum da dum da dum. But isn't it beautiful? Isn't it lovely? I'm glad it isn't jazz. It isn't. That old drummer sitting back at those brushes, and he's playing. Da dum da dum da dum da 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 dum dum da dum. That's it. That's it. Now that isn't one two three waltzes. One day when heaven was filled with his praise, isn't that, isn't that, it's one, two, three, da, 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 it isn't Mark's music, uh, I want all you boys in this building, all you boys under 15 years old, I want you to give me a little tempo here, uh, <laughs> give me, uh, give me left, 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 right, left, and keep it up until you stop, now, if you're, from three years old to 15, give me this beat. Now, I want to have you say left and loud, because I, I, I can't hear it over the symphony orchestra. <laughs> and the left, 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 right, left. All right, you ready? Let's go. Left, left, say it, say it. Left, 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 right, left. Keep on. Keep on now. Okay, that's it. All, right. All those great old tunes were march tunes. You know why they were march tunes? Because back in those days, God's people were militant and aggressive and disciplined and trained. That's why. Why, back in those days, you take up old John Newton, some of those fellas, imagine coming along them and putting on their soft lights and these strings and this harp twerking and uh, some female chickadee stand up there and singing, Ooh, he's in the mountains, and ooh, he's in the hills, and ooh, he's in the birds, and ooh, I see him in the baby, and <laughs> all that stuff. Why, listen, those fellas, they had a military music. That thing was March, brother. It had iron behind it. Now, do you know the difference between those things? The difference is simply, it isn't in the temple. 
Some of the slow ones are dirty. It isn't the embellishments. Some of the melodies are no good. It's in the beat you put behind it. That's what makes the difference. Makes all the difference in the world. Now you take a song like this. When Charlie Fuller's quartet sings that, or Theodore Epps' quartet sings it, they sing it right. That's more you can say for a lot of quartets. <laughs> well, you couldn't say what quartets in the air, but a good 20 years ago in America, but not anymore. Both got the right. And so they sing the thing right, and they'll sing. See, there's nothing wrong with fast Christian music. There's nothing wrong with lively Christian music. There's nothing wrong, wrong with spirited Christian music, but it's the beat. It's the beat you put behind it. Uh, I'll sing it and change it. You raise your hand when you hear it change. I'm, a, I'm not going to change the melody, and I'm not going to change the time. But I'm going to fix it, brother. I'm going to fix it. I'm going to put the devil right on top of it, right in the middle of it. You raise your hand and you hear it change. This world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckon me. That's it. Now, I didn't change the speed. The angels beckon me from heaven's open. Off you go, man. And that stuff, listen, that stuff is going all over this country. All over this country. Uh, it, the only diction they want these days is African. The only rhythm they want is African. I've heard these little old white girls, 16, 17, 18 years old, sitting up there. You think it was, you'd never guess who they were by the sound of their voice, you know. Sitting up there, there's a, and the beat goes on, you know, that kind of business. Well, that isn't, that isn't, listen, that, that ain't it. That ain't it. I've heard some of these quartets sing, and those of us that played in dance bands, we know where the trumpet breaks are. I know where the in intros are. I know where the solos are. Or they, where they break them. That is, a quartet will be singing along and stop the place and the bass fell in. That's a drum solo for eight bars. I played them. I played them. Get this high screeching tenor holding one note where the rest of them are singing. That's a lead trumpet. That's the first trumpet right next to the, right next to the rhythm section, holding it, going on through. God's people are getting hold of that stuff. Now, Benny Goodman came to Paramount Theater in 1938, and I won't go into a long thing, lest I bore you with it, but 1938, when Benny Goodman came to Paramount Theater, you talk about Elvis Presley, you talk about the Beatles, he had them burning their arms in the footlights, tearing off their clothes in the aisles, cutting themselves with razors up and down the aisles, they were shrieking and hollering and stomping, uh, the, uh, the Beatles never had nothing on Benny Goodman when he opened at the Paramount. Or Gene Group on the drums, and Roy Elig on the trumpet, and Lionel Hampton on the vibra harp, and Jeff Stacy at the piano, and Harry James and Bunny Berrigan up there in the trumpet section. Boy, they blew it. And when they blew it, they played. And after they got through with their business, some of the singers took over. Paul Whiteman said one time that Tommy Dorsey ruined American music. Somebody said to, Dor to Whiteman, why do you say that? And he said, because Dorsey taught people to come and listen to the lyrics instead of listen to the music. And he said, the people in America now are trained to listen to the words, and musically they've gone deaf. What Tommy did, he'd get them to come here, Joe Stafford and Frank Sinatra and the Pied Pipers. And pretty soon they were coming to hear Helen O'Connell and, and uh, uh, Jimmy, what's his name? Can't think of it offhand. Come to me in a while. Everly. Bob Everly, Ray Everly. Bob Everly and the Ray Everly. And then pretty soon they began to come here, Doris Day and Patty Page and Perry Como and Frankie Sinatra. And the first thing you know, it was vocals. Did you know in the 1950s, American music got in such bad shape that most of the people that made records were one singer with a combo of three or four people, like Nat King Cole. Just one singer. Americans became tone deaf, rhythm deaf, harmony deaf, and musically deaf, and they're deafer than a post today. You know, back when I was a boy, you had to have some skill to play a drum. You had to be able to do four things at a different time. You don't anymore. The beat behind all these songs that comes out is what we call a... Well, it's, I'll tell you what it is, it's a rumba. Uh, when this dance first came in America, it came through uh, Cuba and Puerto Rico and Jamaica and New Orleans, fine European countries. And it came through there, and the first dance, they, dance down there was a tongo. That means I touch. First person, present, indicative, active, linear, Spanish, tongo, I touch. The bodies came together. Over in Europe, they did the polka. The bodies don't touch. They did the waltz. The bodies didn't touch. But there are some folks at church like how the bodies get together. The bodies touch, tongo, to come together. And then after that, the foxtrot, the grizzly bear, the bunny hug, 
the jitterbug. Did you ever notice how many of those ants are named after animals? The dog, the bug, the fox, the mambo and the salmon, the... We had one called the Big Apple when I was a boy coming up, and the Lambeth Walk, and God knows what. All that stuff going on, bodies coming together, and those old Spanish folks play. La Cumparcita, and they play. You listen to this stuff, this stuff coming out of these jukeboxes today. That old drummer back there, I don't care what they're singing, whether it's slow or fast, he's playing. You know what that's a combination of? That's a combination of Jamaican and Puerto Rican natives from Africa and a certain group that came over there and came up through with it. Can't you just see Beethoven and Brahms getting wild over that? Now, God's people should have three kinds of music. And with this, I'll close. Turn to Colossians. And Colossians chapter 3, notice that three kinds of music are available for the Christian. And surely in this list, you can find some kind of music that you like and enjoy. Colossians chapter 3, verse 16. Colossians 3, 16. Colossians 3, 16. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in Psalms, that's the book of Psalms, put the music. Hymns, that's like the hymn book you got right down there in the back of the seat. And spiritual songs, that's like these solos that are sung. Any song that's spiritual is good for you. Are uh, the songs of uh, the songs that that uh, that uh, Brahms? He's not really romantic. He's half classical. He's a throwback reactionary. The, the stuff to put out by Handel and Mozart and Bach. Those men, those are spiritual songs. Real classical music is spiritual. You know what you can do? You can take a, the Fourth Symphony by Brahms and E minor, or the night, or uh, take, uh, or take some of Bach's oratorios or some of his organ pieces, and you can go in your house and lie down on the floor and put your feet up on a sofa if you that's informal, or lie down on the sofa and put your feet in the pillow if you're not that informal. And you can listen to that stuff and do that stuff on, and your mind can just go all over heaven and all over glory and all over the Holy Spirit and all over the second coming and all over your prayer life and all over your backsliding and all over your victories, and you'll never feel out of home. You'll never feel away from home. But some of you folks, bless your heart. That stuff you're listening to, and, you're, and some of you shocked this morning. People get, somebody gets shocked every time I preach for some reason, but, but some of you are real shocked this morning at my conduct here in the pulpit. You know something? You got that junk in your home and you listen to it. It sounds kind of funny coming back from the pulpit, don't it? I can like see the fellow smoke in the pulpit, you know. It looked kind of peculiar, wouldn't it? And you got that stuff, and I'll tell you something else. You got prejudice about it you need to get over. You say, well, Brother Ruckman, I just like it. Well, quit liking it. You say, Brother Ruckman, I just enjoy it. Quit enjoying it. Repent. <laughs> Amen, brother. Repent. Repent. We've got a whole nation of Christians that don't want preachers telling them what to do anymore. And that's what that's something you need to clean up on. You need to get that music right. You know what I think? I think music has an awful lot to do with how you start the day. And the earlier I get up in the morning, the more I'm convinced. I've had to get up at 6.45 every morning for about a year or so and get my boys off to school. I turn on that radio and I think to myself, how in the world? How in the world can grown men and women get up and go down to jobs in the offices and shift work at the plant? And how can they get up and go downtown and do what they ought to do on that, on that man, that weeping and whining and wailing and sniveling? Uh, I'd like to get a radio station where boy from 6.30 to 7, you had nothing but march music, brother. Just get up, boom, it up, boy, get them going, man, get that thing moving. I mean, who in the world wants a guy coming on there and saying, I gave away the rose when I gave away the wine. <laughs> My God, what a way to start a day, brother. What a way to start a day. And the same thing I'm about through. The same thing applies to music. You know that? Folks, you'll never get nothing but a light, frothy, bouncy, springy, jazzy Christianity with that kind of music. And you're never going to have a deep, solid, spiritual Christianity, you get back to the old stuff and the old hymns and the music has got the iron and the blood in it. The iron and the blood. I trust the words of the wise is sufficient. 
I hope when you go over there, some of you have a record burning. You know, I did when I got saved. I really did. I had the finest collection of Glenn Miller and Benny Goodman and Artie Shaw records you ever saw. And I just like saying the Beatles and the Monkeys and the James Brown these days. James Brown. <laughs> and and taken and and I went I went back in the in the incinerator out in the backyard. I took those beautiful Bluebird records, Bluebird Company back in those days, and RCAs. I took them over and just held them over that fire. They just melted and just dropped in my hand like that, and then just dripped off into that into that place. It ought to go. Spiritual songs, songs, hymns. Listen, get in there can stir you up and get you going and keep you full of energy and keep you full of power and keep your affections on things above and give you courage and give you backbone and the rest of it. That demoralizing saccharine, sound like black molasses dripping out of a busted jug. Get rid of that stuff. Get rid of it. Amen. Amen, brother. Let's stand. Let's stand. Now, I'm not going to give an invitation this morning. Huh? <laughs> Some of you are probably so mad you wouldn't respond anyway, but I'm going to leave with you and trust God to speak to your heart through it. Brother Smith dismisses with prayer.